Russian troops attacked columns of armored vehicles, a pack of motorbikes, and 200 paratroopers. The enemy tried to break through on the Kurakov direction, but it was stopped by the fighters of the AFU's 79th Separate Paratrooper Assault Brigade, who are holding the defense in the southwestern part of Donetsk region. The brigade fighters reported about the course of one of the largest armored attacks by the Russians on their Facebook page. The message of the fighters appeared on the network in the evening of July the 24th. It is indicated that the Tavria Brigade repelled the largest attempt of the Russians to break through in the Kurakov direction. 57 armored vehicles went into battle, including 11 tanks, 45 armored vehicles, one Terminator tank support vehicle. This mass of vehicles was assisted by racers on 12 motorbikes and 200 Russian paratroopers, the Ukrainian military said. The Russians launched their attack in the morning and moved from several directions at once. At first, they were stopped on the distant approaches by artillery and mines. Then, FPV drones came into play. At a certain point, the assault stalled. The armored vehicles stopped and the paratroopers scattered to shelters in forested areas. However, drone operators found them there too, the Ukrainians summarized. As a result of the battle, our paratroopers hit six tanks and seven AFVs with infantry, burned all 12 motorbikes. The Russians suffered huge losses in manpower. 40 Russians destroyed another 37 wounded, reads the note of 79th Separate Paratrooper Assault Brigade. A video from the scene shows columns of Russian tanks moving straight across the fields. Five vehicles can be counted in one of them, the battle footage shows. Some of them were blown up by mines, some of them exploded after anti-tank weapon strikes, and some of them were blown up by FPV drones. Deep State's online battle map shows that the front line near Vuladar is changing on the northern flank. The distance from the battle line to Kharkov is about 12 kilometers. The report of the Ukrainian general staff as of the evening of July the 24th described the situation in the east. It is stated that during the day, the hottest situation was right near Kurakov. The Russians attacked 29 times. Russia, which has suffered numerous equipment losses, sends old cannons of 1940s to the front in Ukraine. Due to huge losses at the front, Russia is forced to remove increasingly older equipment from warehouses for which shells are sometimes simply not available. And this is where the aggressor is saved by the North Korea, which still produces shells for vintage artillery from the middle of the last century, writes Forbes. Today, the M46 howitzer, found only in museums, was developed in 1946 to 1950 and became perhaps the most powerful cannon in the USSR at that time. It required eight service personnel to fire 130 millimeter shells at a distance of 37 kilometers at a rate of five shells per minute. It's a powerful weapon, but it's heavy, difficult to transport, and labor intensive. That's why the Soviet Army replaced the M46 with the more effective 152 millimeter howitzer in the 1970s. The heavy losses of these new guns and the depletion of Russia's pre war stockpiles of artillery barrels and shells took the Kremlin back in time. About a year into the war in Ukraine, the M46's shortcomings were no longer a problem. At that point, the alternative to old artillery was no artillery, Forbes writes. According to calculations by OSINT analyst Heimarsd, as of 2022, Russia had 665 M46 guns in reserve. By February 2024, about 65 had been withdrawn. However, the rate of reactivation has now jumped sharply. I haven't counted the exact number yet, but they probably took about half of the 130mm M46s from storage, HIMARSD reported recently. However, it is worth noting that Russian factories no longer produce 130mm shells but North Korean factories do. With its powerful projectile and decent range, the M46 is particularly useful as a counter-battery weapon that is as a howitzer for destroying other howitzers. This is the conclusion reached by the US Central Intelligence Agency, which in 2009 examined the artillery stockpiles of North and South Korea. 
The CIA called the M46 the most effective counter-battery weapon in Korea. But the Russians may have a hard time using these guns on the front lines in Ukraine. Russia has already lost so many trucks and artillery tractors that it has begun equipping front-line regiments and brigades with civilian all-terrain vehicles and motorcycles. Another problem with the 70-year-old M46 is that Russia is becoming dependent on the largesse of its allies. Only North Korea and Iran have retained large-scale production of the 130mm shell. To keep its new old howitzers in action, Moscow will have to maintain good relations with Pyongyang and Tehran, Forbes emphasizes.